And Ale, we told you that we are monitoring developments as regards the 2024 Armed Forces Remembrance Day uh, celebration. The president today performed the wreath laying ceremony with other dignitaries to mark uh, this day's event. And across the country, other state governors have also performed uh, several rites to mark the day. Well, for more on this, I'm being joined by the spokesperson, Ministry of Defense, uh, Ministerial Committee on Armed Forces Veterans Welfare, Awal Abdullahi Ali, who joins me from our Buja studio. Glad to have you join us at this time. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Well, um, as regards security, um, the conversation most times is far-reaching, but Let's begin with some of the challenges men of the Nigerian army face, particularly those on the field. And what else do you have to tell us as regards the state of their welfare at this time? Well, thank you very much uh, once again for having me. Like you know, uh, a lot of challenges are there for uh, officers and men at the field. Uh, uh, like you rightly know, uh, Nigeria today is in a turmoil kind of the security challenges almost in every state and then uh, the ones that are handling uh, the security challenges are members of the Nigerian Armed Forces which uh, you like everybody know are well trained highly professional highly disciplined uh, troops that Nigeria have not only within Nigeria West Africa African continent and even the world at large agree that the members of the Nigerian Armed Forces are highly professional well trained and highly disciplined on one side. In the issue of challenges in terms of security, like I earlier uh, said, in, in the whole of the, 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 the country, we all know that uh, uh, right now, uh, 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 first and foremost, is the issue of welfare. The welfare uh, and the well-being of the members of the uh, serving personnel is the paramount thing and is at the forefront. Though a challenge, but uh, the present crop of uh, service chiefs uh, under the leadership of uh, General C.G. Musa, the Chief of Defense Staff, are uh, doing everything humanly possible to see to it that uh, they bridge the gap, uh, the welfare uh, challenges gap, the uh, manpower uh, development gap, the short of manpower itself, the equipment needed for, to fight or combat um, crimes and criminality or insecurity generally in the country is also uh, being looked, to, uh, looked into by the present crops of uh, service chiefs under the leadership of President Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, uh, which, like I said earlier, he brought in professionals uh, from the Chief of Defense Staff, C.G. Musa, to the that of Air Force, Navy, and, uh, um, uh, and the Army. Uh, they are working in synergy and looking towards um, finding lasting solution. But be that as it may, like I said, first and first is the welfare of the troops themselves. Because it is only when uh, the troops are properly taken care of, that is when they will concentrate in doing... All right, Mr. Ali, um, like you course. rightly said, as we, you know, strive for the perfect condition of service of uh, men of the military, it's also important for us to uh, raise the conversation of military men who die in the line of their duty. And, you know, some of their family members are not aware of this. And there's also the issue of benefits, getting the benefits that, that is accrued to them. But can you talk to us about what is being done as regards eliminating the bureaucratic process that we see in the military today? Well, uh, like you know, uh, the armed forces is a structure and it's a system. As a service, there are procedures naturally on whatever happened, from recruitment to promotion to retirement to, to death. Uh, all these things, there are procedures that laid out procedures on how from point A to point B, what needed to be done at what time, for what reason, how fast or how slow it can be. So it is a uh, government bureaucracy, just like uh, the armed forces equally have that bureaucracy, just like any other government prostata. But things are faster in the armed forces when it comes to the issue of looking after the welfare and the well-being of personnel. Yes, there are challenges of those that died in the line of duty. Uh, the the uh, 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 their entitlement that is accrued that is supposed to be paid to the, uh, their family members and things like that. You know, it takes a process. As the a soldier die in the battlefield, first he start from the unit where he is serving. A signal and other document will have to be ready for it to follow up to the division, to the brigade rather, from the brigade to the division from the division to headquarters of the service, either Army, Air Force, or Navy. Then from there, pass to the 
military pension board who is responsible for taking care of for the payment of debt benefit uh, and then uh, retirement uh, benefit so there are procedures and process that need to be followed from let's take like i said from death to payment of benefit for those in active service same thing goes for those who sustain injuries um, while in active service at the war front uh, before, as they go to hospital, there are equally procedures, even though that one is shorter and faster, but that of the dead benefit is the one that takes a little time because of, uh, uh, you know, there's bureaucracy, uh, government bureaucracy and pro uh, administrative procedures that needed to be followed to fill in before you get to the time of payment. But even at that, uh, I can guarantee you that uh, this time around, things are faster than they used to be uh, before now. Before now, it takes two, three, four, up to, up to five years before a dead uh, family of the uh, deceased get their dead benefit. But uh, believe me, uh, this time around, uh, with the present crop of leadership of the armed forces, it is no longer like that. In fact, uh, under 12 calendar months, at worst scenario, at worst scenario, 12 calendar months, uh, the family gets their benefit. Uh, 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 Mr. Ali, I'm sure we could go on rights. and on about uh, the benefits that these men deserve. But there's also, you, in most cases, we have a one-sided story of uh, men in the military where, you know, Nigerians just believe that the armed forces are not doing enough as regards tackling uh, banditry, terrorism, and other menace that we have in Nigeria today. But uh, can you talk to us about the way forward at this time? Well, the way forward is simple. First and foremost, Nigerians should strongly believe in the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. They are there. They are non-tribalistic, non-religious, non-regional. They are for Nigeria and fighting for Nigeria. That is one aspect of it. And then uh, you needed uh, manpower development, like I said earlier. You needed to uh, do f more recruitment. Believe me. Believe me, there are a lot of challenges. If you look at what is happening right now, the total strength of the Nigerian Armed Forces is nothing to write home about if you want to compare it with the uh, population of Nigeria. We have over 224 uh, million Nigerians with less than 1 million members of the Armed Forces putting together the Air Force, Navy uh, and the Army. Put together is not up to 1 million. And you need not less than 2 million members of the Armed Forces to be able to cater for the number of uh, or for the large population of Nigeria, that is about 224 uh, millions. At least you need a, the big, uh, starting point of about 2 million uh, members of the armed forces, which, we, like I said, is not up to 1 million. I don't need to say, uh, mention the number because of for security reasons, but it's not up to a million. And if you need up to 2 million and you don't have up to a million, naturally, and if you look at the challenges, almost 32 states out of the 37 or 36 states, including Abuja, are having one security challenge or the other in Nigeria, and out there are Ms. all Ali, I'm, I'm men sure uh, some in finding of the challenges the solutions. that you are mentioning uh, is being addressed at this time. But as we remember the armed forces today, we also acknowledge the effort of men and women who, you know, put their lives on the line to ensure that uh, the nation is protected. Well, I've been speaking with the spokesperson, Ministry of Defence, Ministerial Committee on Armed Forces. Veterans Welfare, Awal Abdullahi Aliyu from our Abuja studio. Thank you for joining us on the news at this time. Thank you for having me. Well, we move to your state where the Minister of Power, 